Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all awesome and doing epic building dives. But today, we're gonna take a look at a product. I have a V-Fly Finder 2 Smart Battery Equipped Buzzer. We're gonna dive into this thing, and we're gonna take it out of the box, and we're gonna talk about the features, and then we're gonna get into the stuff that I like about it, and the stuff that I don't like about it, and today we're just all about this buzzer. So. What do you say we just get into it, we'll jump to the overhead, and we'll get this thing out of the box, and we'll see what it's all about. Alright, so as we get this guy open here, let's pop it right out. And so, right immediately, as we remove this thing from the box, we're going to get into probably one of my favorite features of this thing, and it isn't the buzzer at all. And this is actually a little bit of a quick pro tip. I love when products come in these plastic boxes. Uh, they're reusable, you can use them to store all kinds of little different, you know, odds and ends and whatever, uh, you know, stash it somewhere, keep your parts together. Um, these plastic boxes are awesome. So if you pick one of these up, save this box, put stuff in it, you won't be disappointed. Right here, I have a little bit of an example of how I use these things. And so this is the container from a flight controller. And look at it, I'm doing a five inch build here and I've got it to separate standoffs and screws and stuff and it keeps everything together. Uh, again, the nice thing about these plastic containers is if I'm done, I can just close it up, I can put it aside and nothing's getting lost. So already as we get this thing out of the box, this thing levels up one point just simply because it came with this plastic box. Um, I love these things. It's a small add-on, but I really think this says a lot when a company puts this kind of effort into their packaging, especially when you get something like this that you can reuse. And for us, I mean, just think about all the little parts and nuts and bolts and everything you have. Jam them in these things, and then you won't lose anything anymore. All right, enough rambling about the packaging. Let's get this thing open, and we'll see exactly what's inside. So as we open it up, we're going to be greeted by the buzzer itself. Uh, again, you can see everything is well packaged. You know, not only was it in that external brown box and the plastic enclosure, and now we have some bubble wrap, uh, but also this was in another box when it was shipped to me. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this thing is going to be damage free coming from China. I don't know exactly how you're going to receive yours because I've got these that have not come in the brown box, but still, whatever. Plastic box is awesome. Love it. So, we have the buzzer itself. They give you a zip tie, and this is actually a halfway decent zip tie. These are reasonably strong, and you can use it to secure your buzzer. You also get the pigtail to be able to connect things up, and this guy is just going to pop right in the back side, just like that. And there you go, now you're ready to solder this thing up. As we dig in here, looks like we've got some instructions. Uh, instructions can certainly be helpful. And as we roll these out here, uh, looks like we have a description of all the items that are on here. Uh, control cable socket, disarm button, uh, there is an LED on here, the buzzer itself, uh, the LiPo battery, and also there is a charging status LED on this thing as well. They give you a diagram on how to wire up the buzzer. So they're gonna show you a few different things here. Uh, I don't know how well this is gonna translate when I actually put this on YouTube. Hopefully you guys can, you know, get the gist of this anyway. Um, so, you know, they show you a few different things here, uh, a couple different flight controllers, and you can actually wire this up to a PWM receiver as well. So if you have a airplane or maybe even an RC car, I know this isn't the norm for, for that type of activity, but you know, you can put this in. I mean, I, I think you could really install this buzzer in just about anything that has a five volt pad, takes a battery, and you're worried about that battery ejecting on you. Um, so yeah, here's the general connections and that's about it for this side. Uh, on the other side, they give you some details on the operation, how to use it, uh, how to activate it, how to alarm it manually. Uh, so on and so forth. I don't think we need to get into all that because we're going to talk about the functions on the buzzer itself as we go. Um, and then we have some specifications. Uh, some of these I think are important. Uh, you know, we look at the size. This can help us determine if it's going to fit in our build. This guy is fairly small. 
And for all my US friends, in case you're ever wondering, 24 millimeters is approximately one inch. One inch is slightly larger than 24 millimeters, so use that as your ballpark. So 24, one inch, 13, pretty safe to say that that's about a half inch. And you know, so that'll give you a good idea of the dimensions. Essentially, we're dealing with one inch by a half inch. Um, this isn't the smallest battery equipped buzzer on the market. There are others out there that are smaller and it's also not the largest one. I think this guy fits right in the middle. Um, but again, this one has features that some of the other ones don't and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you know, again with the specs, five grams, so it's not too, too heavy. Uh, super loud buzzer in it. Uh, it says 105 decibels. This is much, much louder than your standard buzzer that you're gonna be putting uh, in your drone uh, or probably pretty much anything else as far as if you're getting a passive buzzer and you know soldering it up to that five volt pad and your, your buzzer minus. Average charge time here, about an hour and a half. Uh, 80 milliamp LiPo, <laughs> that's funny, huh? 80 milliamp LiPo. But I mean, look at it, it's just a little tiny baby battery. Uh, our input voltage, four and a half to about eight and a half volts that's nice to have a little bit of range because not all regulators are going to come in at exactly their specific voltage so you know it's good to have a little bit of fluff room in there uh, to make sure that you don't fry it you do have a couple of different alarm patterns here one thing about this particular buzzer is there isn't any configuration as far as how it is going to beep like some of the other ones have. You kind of have to like push and hold and monkey with the buzzer. This doesn't have any of that. Um, this just does its thing. So for the first 40 seconds after disconnecting power, you're going to have a low volume beep. Uh, after 40 seconds to two hours, it's going to beep at maximum volume every single four seconds. And it doesn't just do a single chirp. It's it's kind of like a little pattern of a chirp, which makes it much easier to hear. And of course, you know, find your drone when it's lost. Uh, after two hours, in order to try to preserve the battery, because I mean, let's face it, if it's been out there for two hours and this thing is beeping and you can't find it, now you're probably in like major recovery mode. So after two hours, it's gonna start beeping at every 10 seconds. And I've never made it to this point with them, but I do believe that it is still gonna chirp the pattern. Um, while it is in alarm state, it is also going to flash this super bright LED on here. And I hope you guys can see it, uh, you know, through the heat shrink and the overhead camera. And now this is on the internet and YouTube's horrible compression algorithm. And, but anyway, <laughs> Hopefully you can see the LED in there. Um, if this buzzer gets triggered, it is also going to flash the LED. But there's more cool stuff about this. This has an onboard light sensor. So if it's nighttime, it's not gonna chirp the buzzer anymore. It's gonna put it into kind of like a standby mode where it's not chirping the buzzer, so it's not making a whole bunch of racket. That way, if you're stuck in a tree all night and you can't get it down, it's not going to annoy anybody. It's got a blink, I don't know. I'm sure there'll be that one person that'll get annoyed by the blinking because this thing's pretty bright. But I mean, otherwise, you know, it's gonna quiet itself down for the nighttime, but you're still gonna have that blink. and. I really like this feature of the LED. I think it can be invaluable in certain circumstances, um, getting that flash of light. Um, as we move along here, we've got the disarm button. It's super easy to use. I prefer this method of using the button over the plug, unplug, which of course this buzzer is compatible with that plug, unplug method. Uh, and they describe to you how to do it in the instructions as well. Uh, most of them you plug them in for a few seconds and then you unplug them and that's going to disarm the buzzer. This one you just simply push the button and it, it'll disarm right up for you. And I really like that feature. Um, but keep this in mind, when you're mounting this in your quad, I can't put enough emphasis on making sure that this button is easy to access to make it convenient and easy to disarm this buzzer while you're swapping batteries or even getting ready to pack up and go home for the day. Uh, kind of what I do is I mount mine. So as I'm holding the quad from the bottom, I can slide a thumb in and I'll push the button with my thumb as I'm holding the quad and then just yank the power lead out 
and I kind of just do it all in one motion now. Um, but again, keep this button available. You're, you're going to want access to this. Uh, as far as hookup and input goes, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got some nice silicone wires here, and we only have three connections. We have 5 volt in, we have ground, and we have the buzzer. Now when you're hooking this up, 5 volts is 5 volts, ground is ground, and this is going to be your buzzer negative. Some flight controllers won't label it as a buzzer negative. Uh, they might just call it your buzzer pad, but that's what it is. That's usually your negative terminal for the buzzer itself. That's kind of how you're going to control a device uh, with a microcontroller and whatever. We don't need to get into the specifics of that, but yellow lead, this is your buzzer control wire. Uh, this goes to your buzzer pad, buzzer negative pad, and this is how you're going to be able to activate this with a switch on your transmitter. Uh, you know, sometimes you just you end up kerplunked in a tree and you kind of know where it is. Battery's still plugged in. You're homing in on the location of where it is. Flip the switch on your transmitter. Do a couple of beeps. Now you can find your quad super easy. Just walk right on over and, you know, pluck it out of the tree if you have to. I mean, even if you're like in a bush or tall grass or anything like that, uh, this is a nice feature to still be able to use this as a standard buzzer. And again, with the 100 plus dB buzzer in here, this is going to be much louder than any other buzzer that you're going to connect to your drone. Uh, at least those standard passive buzzers anyway. I know there are some manufactured active buzzers and whatnot now, and they use the same buzzer unit, but whatever. You know, this is more encompassing. You get a lot more for your money with this. Um, so I guess in a nutshell, that's the general features. Uh, the whole idea behind this is if your battery becomes disconnected, uh, within a few seconds, the buzzer is going to start chirping. You're going to use this audible alarm to, you know, hopefully find your craft. Uh, on the retail side, these things come in at about 15 bucks. I do know that you do get a little bit of a discount on Amazon if you buy a three pack. So that might be worthwhile. These really aren't that expensive, so I can't see why you wouldn't want to install them in all your fleet. Uh, I mean, geez, for at the very least, all of your main flyers. I mean, think about it. If you have a decent quad with a GoPro on it, that's like a $1,000 investment. 15 bucks to recover a 1000 I'll pay that any day. That is such a small insurance policy to have. Okay, so there's the general overview of the buzzer itself. Uh, things that I definitely like, I may have mentioned some of these, but let's go over it again. Super loud buzzer. It's got a decent sized battery with a good capacity. I like the disarm button. I like the fact that this disarm button is a single press. Some of them you have to do multiple pushes and I mean, it can be a little inconvenient. And like I was describing before, I'll get in there with one hand and I'll do a push and unplug all in one shot and it's just easy. Uh, I like the LED on here. I believe that this is the only battery buzzer on the market with a built-in LED. Uh, and, and this is a really awesome feature, especially if you're in a dark area. Uh, and you might even be able to see this light because it's so bright before you can even hear the buzzer, depending on the environment. So again, that's all awesome. Uh, we talked about the box for a while. Love the box, great feature. Um, geez, I'd buy these things all day just to get these boxes. All right, so there's the buzzer, there's things that I like. Now let's get into a couple of the things that I don't like, because of course, in any review that I do, we're gonna talk about the good and we're gonna talk about the bad. What I don't like is the fact that this button is mounted on its side. Um, it's easy to break, especially when you're tying the buzzer to something. I usually install these in the backside of my quad and I will put a zip tie around it um, kind of to the antenna stem. Let me grab an antenna and I'll give you a quick example of like how I'll mount it. Here's an antenna here. And when I connect my antenna to the VTX, pretend my finger is the VTX, I'm gonna screw that in there. And then I'm gonna take this buzzer and I'm gonna zip tie it to the side of it, kind of like that. So we're gonna end up with basically, you know, something that's gonna look like this when I, when I tie it in there. Um, again, you pull this tight and this, well, the switch is gonna break. I have an example of that right here. Uh, trying to tighten it in there just over time, 
you know, with the zip tie and pushing on the button, look at it. It just literally completely broke off in my hands. So that's what I don't like. Uh, I wish they did a flat mount button like this. Uh, then you could put the zip tie on there much easier. And I don't mind like poking a hole in the heat shrink to be able to push that button if it's mounted in this orientation. Okay, the next thing is this plug. I hate plugs. I really hate plugs, especially on quadcopters. Um, this comes loose way too easily. After a couple of cycles, uh, it just there's nothing holding this in here anymore. I understand the advantage of implementing a plug like this, uh, and that's to make it quick and easy to swap out the buzzer, but I don't think that's practical, especially for a quadcopter. I mean, let's think about this for a second. The chassis and the frames flex. When you have this thing mounted, it's probably gonna be buried in there somewhere. Like I said earlier, just enough to be able to get your finger in to hit the button. But when the frame flexes and you have this tied in there and this is attached to something on one side and you got your flight controller on the other side, when that frame bends, okay, let's actually, let's kind of like mock this up. When the frame bends, what's going to happen? That's immediately going to come unplugged and that can be a problem <laughs> uh, if you're relying on it. And, you know, as long as it's charged up and it comes unplugged, I believe it's still going to sound. But, you know, long term, maybe the connection isn't solid anymore and you don't realize it. Uh, now you've crashed and you're relying on the buzzer and you just, you're not connected, battery's dead, and you're SOL. So on things like this, I would really like to see solder pads. Uh, in the past while installing these, here's another example of one that I've had previously installed. I've actually removed that plug and I've direct soldered to the pads themselves. And you know, this is gonna stop that from coming undone uh, in the event of a crash. And the reason why I bring this up is because I have literally had a TBS Unify VTX come unplugged in a crash when the frame flexed. If that can come unplugged with the locking connector, then I guarantee you this can come unplugged too. Not to mention, connectors add weight. I literally cut the connectors off of absolutely everything at this point. Um, I can understand the argument of the connector, it's easier to install, um, but you know, let's face the facts here. If you're building quads, you gotta learn how to solder. Some of these things can be small and really fiddly. Improve your soldering skills, learn how to small solder on small pads, and put some of those pads on this buzzer and Derek will be a happy camper. So there you go. More of my incoherent ramblings, but this time it's on the V-Fly Finder 2 battery equipped buzzer. Overall, I think this is an awesome idea and it's an awesome concept. I think this product is well executed, probably one of the better ones as far as this idea goes from manufacturer to manufacturer. I. I wouldn't call any one of these buzzers a clone of the next because they all have their own little features and they're all a little bit different. So even though some of them are similar and they might offer similar features, I definitely wouldn't call this a clone of anything else. I mean, the form factor isn't even the same and I'm gonna say that about all the other ones. There's probably about five or six different designs of these, they're all a little bit different. But again, I like this one, I like the features, I like the one push to be able to disable it, um, other than a couple of minor things, but I'm really particular about everything that I do. It's just the way that I am, and so, you know, sometimes I just have to deal with things. In the description, I'm gonna have links to be able to purchase these guys on Amazon. That link was provided from VFly. Uh, I believe that is their direct Amazon store and that's their preferred method for shoppers within the US. I mean, hey, if you got a Prime account, you can get one of these babies in probably two days or less. So, you know, free shipping, why not? You get it much, much quicker than if you ordered it from China. Also, there's gonna be a link to the product description in case I missed anything or you're interested in taking a look at it. You can head right on over to VFly's website and check out the full product description of this particular unit. What do you say we wrap this video up? I wanna say thank you to VFly for sending this out to me for a review. Hopefully I did a good job for you guys. Uh, and you know, thank you, John. Also, don't forget to check out Hot Dog FPV. 
Love those guys. Come on. But you already know that. So maybe head on over there, hotdogfpv.com. Buy yourself something awesome. Uh, I would recommend a t-shirt from Derek and his drone. One of my favorites. Now that springtime's rolling around, I think you'd look pretty good in that shirt. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.